Hey there, today we're going to look at production of materials 1.1, the very beginning of the HSC course, the first section of the first part of the Year 12 studies, energy and raw materials from fossil fuels. Alright, uh, so first of all we'll start with what are fossil fuels. Basically, uh, fossil fuels are uh, crude oil, natural gas, and coal. Uh, they're all uh, resources that we uh, dig up or, or pump up out of the ground, and um, they're all composed, uh, importantly, of uh, the same basic uh, family chemi of chemicals, uh, which is to say that they are all hydrocarbons. Uh, now, hydrocarbons has a very specific meaning. It means that it's composed only of carbon and hydrogen in various mixes. Uh, importantly, they don't have any oxygen. Uh, so, uh, don't mix them up with carbohydrates, which sounds quite similar. Uh, they're hydrocarbons. And uh, crude oil, natural gas, and coal are all different mixes of hydrocarbons with a different length of chain. So, a basic form for a hydrocarbon is a backbone or a spine of carbons and then hydrogens that come off that. Now, for all hydrocarbons, uh, some of the carbons along the way might have a double bond, say, uh, but um, for natural hydrocarbons in fossil fuels, those are composed almost completely of saturated hydrocarbons. And when we say they're saturated, we mean that they're saturated with hydrogen, which means they've got as much hydrogen as possible. Uh, one example of that might be ethane, uh, which is the length 2 hydrocarbon chain. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we say they're saturated if they've got as much hydrogen as possible. Uh, and if they've got as much hydrogen as possible, of course, that implies that there aren't any double bonds, because if there were double bonds between carbons, that means they wouldn't have as much uh, hydrogen as possible. So, it's still a hydrocarbon if it's not saturated. Uh, if it's only composed of carbon and hydrogen, uh, it's still a hydrocarbon, but it's not. Uh, you're not likely to find those in fossil fuels in large amounts. The, the key components of fossil fuels are saturated hydrocarbons, of different lengths. So, uh, saturated hydrocarbons are also known as alkanes. Of course, if it doesn't have a, uh, if it's saturated, that implies that it doesn't have a double bond, in which case it's called an alkane, uh, like methane, ethane, uh, and all the others. Alright, uh, now the first thing uh, we need to talk about, uh, well, I mean, I suppose this is the second thing, but uh, crude oil, what's all that about? Uh, you'll need to know about this. Crude oil is synonymous with petroleum. Now, obviously it's related to the word petrol, uh, but it's not the same. Petrol is a different substance. It's a colloquial term that we use, uh, and we'll get to what petrol is. But petroleum means crude oil. Uh, they're synonymous terms. And um, that's the liquid hydrocarbons that uh, exist in a, a bunch of deposits. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you already know a fair bit about uh, petroleum or crude oil uh, colloquially. Specifically, what we need to know about it chemically is that um, we certainly don't just pump crude oil out of the ground and then stick it in our cars. We only use a subset of crude oil, a subset of these hydrocarbons for uh, that particular task, and uh, we use other subsets of uh, crude oil, of those hydrocarbons that are in crude oil, uh, for other tasks. So let's have a look at how we do that and, and what we end up with. We can do that over here. Yeah. All right. So basically, in order to separate out crude oil into its uh, constituent uh, parts or, or more specific mixes of its constituent parts, so uh, remembering, of course, that this is a mix of, of saturated hydrocarbons. So it's got everything in it from just uh, methane through to um, ethane and, and every other uh, ane you can care to mention 
uh, up to very long ones. Um, and uh, these uh, these different hydrocarbons have different uh, chemical properties. They've got different amounts of energy per kilogram or per mole. Uh, so uh, they've got different uses. And for the things that we use hydrocarbons for, it's very useful for us to separate the components out. And uh, that's what this fractional distillation uh, diagram is all about. This kind of shows what's going on in uh, in oil refineries. Uh, they actually they have this. They're doing this. It's on a very large scale. You'll see big, usually white, cylindrical uh, buildings uh, that are um, that are doing this fractional distillation uh, on a large scale. So once the crude oil uh, goes in, basically uh, they heat it up first, and then they place it in here. They allow it to cool out as it rises. Uh, it then um, it then basically uh, congeals, uh, and the different components of it separate out according to uh, how light they are. So the very lightest gases, uh, your methane and your, your ethane, etc., come out uh, top and are captured. Uh, sometimes they're burnt off because um, you know you've got a surplus of the, the very lightest, uh, and then different components are, are captured. So gasoline, which is suitable for using cars, uh, goes here. And then uh, naphtha and kerosene, which have um, more kind of, uh, they're used in heavier engines. Uh, and then gas oil, lubricating oils and residue uh, are captured lower down. So these are longer and longer chains of hydrocarbons. And, and these have kind of specialist industrial purposes. Uh, whereas these feed heavier machinery than cars. Uh, this is used for cars. The light gases, uh, when they're captured, uh, when we don't have an abundance of natural gas or in those areas where we don't, uh, that's used in, in things like LPG uh, vehicles and uh, also just all the things that we use natural gas for. Uh, so, that's fractional distillation. Uh, you might be called upon to uh, to draw this. This is called a uh, fractionating column. The whole uh, the whole uh, industrial setup. Uh, yep. Cool. So it's worth mentioning at this point um, a bit more about petrol because it's um, or gasoline here. First thing I should point out that that's also petrol. Both uh, both names are synonymous. So uh, once again, it's not petroleum. Hot crude oil or crude oil rather is petroleum. Uh, so petrol is a particular range of uh, of alkanes uh, in the range uh, around about C4 to uh, C10, and these are the alkanes that are uh, these are the lighter the lighter subset of alkanes that are liquid at room temperature. Uh, and yeah. Uh, so just just in case you haven't picked this up, uh, definitely remember that petrol is a subset of crude oil. Uh, so gasoline, subset of crude oil. Petrol, subset of petroleum. Uh, same substance, petroleum, crude oil. And petrol and gasoline, same thing. So petrol is part of uh, petroleum. Okay. Now uh, the other really important chemical uh, you'll need to deal with in this section is ethylene, which is also known as ethene. Uh, so let's get to know that now. Uh, now it's not ethane. Uh, you'll note it's ethene. Uh, so the eth bit component means it's got two carbons in its chain, and the ene means it's got a double bond. Uh, so from its name, we can draw it, uh, and this is it. And it's a really useful molecule. It's got a highly reactive double bond, uh, which means that it can be used in a variety of contexts and a variety of chemical reactions. And uh, and that's why we're learning so much about it. Uh, why we will be learning.
hate so much about it. Now, it's called ethene, and it's also called ethylene. These two things are the same. Uh, completely synonymous, no difference. One means the other.